Hey guys, it's your girl KP, and I am coming back with another free game Friday. And um, I thought this would be appropriate for quarantine. I don't know about you guys, but um, quarantine for me equals boredom and loneliness and isolation. Though I do have a cat, so I'm not super isolated um, or super lonely. But you know, there's some days where you're just in the house working from home thinking about doing videos. So uh, let's go. You are Nigel Wimple, hard-heading PBTV documentary filmmaker, okay? You are at 23 Millberry close to finish. Wait, what? You are at 23 Millberry close to finish filming the final episode of your award-winning series. How to Cope with Boredom and Loneliness, a guide for the isolated. You have come to talk with Harold Fletcher, a 43-year-old man who has been grounded to his bedroom for over 30 years. What did he do? Since his mother, Margaret, only allows Harold visitation for 15 minutes a day, you only have enough time to talk about three topics. Cool. She must be Italian. She looks so Italian. <coughs> Carefully choose three items of interest from Harold's room to learn how he copes with boredom and loneliness. How old's Mother Margaret? How long will she punish him for? Oh, I wish you'd stop staring at me, Mr. Wimble. <laughs> Harold doesn't need a father. <laughs> so Margaret is probably born and lonely too. That's why she grounded her son for this long, because she needed a man or something. I don't know. Has Harold not have a dad this whole time? Harold's only view to the larger world is through this telescope. It breaks your heart, hopefully. Maud from 94 is rather slender. Hmm. A rabbit? This oversized cuddly toy looks like it's grown old with Harold. I bet a story about these two growing up could pull at the heartstrings. Neat. What are those stains? <laughs> Kevin's been rather good to me over the years. <laughs> I don't think it's that type of documentary. So let's do the mom. Let's do the telescope. And let's do the fish tank. And then shoot documentary. His name's Harold Fletcher, and he spent the last 30 years grounded to his bedroom. In tonight's final part of How to Cope with Boredom and Loneliness, A Guide for the Isolated, we've saved the worst for last. And by worst, I mean award-winning. Hello, I'm Nigel Wimble. I can't even remember why I grounded him now. It wasn't for any one thing in particular. More just a bubbling pot of bad behavior that's needed to put a lid on, so to speak. You can replace the word lid with Harold's bedroom door to understand Harold's mother's analogy. I was desperate to discover how Harold had been coping with the boredom and loneliness from 30 years of isolation. Harold's mother has always played prison warden from room to room. Margaret, do you worry about the harm this isolation may be causing, Harold? Harold brought this on himself. What about me? I've been isolated too. I haven't had sex since Harold's father died. No one would ever want to be stepfather to that little bastard. You should be making this documentary about me. I'm the one being punished. I'm so lonely, Mr. Wimble. With an eye in the sky, you can sometimes forget where your feet are. For Harold, he never forgets where his feet are, but still has sights on the stars. This old telescope has got me through many an afternoon. Sometimes I'll pretend I'm a World War II sniper and people at the bus stop are advancing Germans. They wouldn't stand a chance if it was a sniper rifle, let me tell you. 
They could try taking cover, but I'm pretty sure the bullets would penetrate the bus shelter. It would be an absolute bloodbath. Okay, hero. You can lose hours to the peace and tranquility of a well-maintained aquarium. But like the fish, Harold is swimming in a sea of isolation. I sometimes look at the fish tankers as if it is my bedroom and I am mother. But then I felt it wasn't fair to keep the fish isolated like me, so I set it free. What did you do with the fish? Well, I took it to school to release into the nearby brook. But by the time I had got there, it had dried out in my pocket. My time with Harold has come to an end. I hope one day he will find freedom and live a full life. Until then, he will continue to look for ways to cope with boredom and loneliness. I'm Nigel Wimble. Good night. Join us next week as Nigel investigates sandwiches. Do they really taste better cut diagonally? I'll let the evidence decide. 9pm Wednesday night on PBTV. <laughs> they thought it was horrible. Alert hot mills in your area. Margaret sounds DTF. She actually does. Can you give her my number? I use my telescope the exact same way. Amazing show. Okay, that guy liked it. He murdered a fish, yet you put this man on television. Okay, um, honestly, it didn't go the way I thought it would go. Um, I didn't realize his mom would go that route. Uh, the telescope was a little dark, but I thought the fish story actually went okay because, you know, it's like the death of him being stuck and grounded. I thought the fish part wasn't bad. Okay, let's try again. Okay, so this time, let's just go the porn route. Um, it looked like order did matter, so... I mean, technically, I could do the mom, I could do the paper stack, and I could do the rabbits, because those are all erotic. Mom, which leads to the paper stack... And because he's writing so much, he's having personal time with the rap. This is the X-rated version. Well, Harold's always been a naughty boy. He's been quite out of hand, you know. I've only got one nice picture of him, and even in that he's pissing on the cat. In the end, I sent him to his bedroom, and the bad behaviour seemed to stop, so I've kept him up there permanently. I had a look around Harold's room to discover what he uses to cope with the boredom and loneliness from 33 years of isolation. I spied a screenplay Harold had been working on, a movie producer in the making. He certainly wouldn't look out of place in Hollywood. He decided to read me some lines from his new screenplay card, Brad Planet and the Tentacle of Temptation. She ran a slightly damp tentacle across his cheek as he gazed longingly into her compound eyes. I don't care that you tried to bite my head off during coitus. I love you, Sheila. Run away to Planet Vargon with me. I love you too, Brad, but my father... Let me talk to him. He'll understand once I show him how much I love you. Now come here and kiss me. Oh, Brad. Sheila passionately kisses Brad with her four mouths. Brad slowly sticks his finger into her gooey. Uh -oh. That will do. <laughs> You're a bloody space pervert. <sighs> Harold and his cohabitor, an overstuffed rabbit, have been through hell together but at least had each other to ease the loneliness. Yes, Kevin is a dear friend. We've become rather close over these past few years and perhaps more than just friends at this stage. What do you mean by that? Well, Kevin has needs and I have needs. I'm forever sewing that towel back on. 
We saw this kind of thing go on in our prison episode, so I'm not entirely surprised to see it happen in here too. Whether this arrangement is mutual, we will never know. As Kevin has decided to remain quiet during the making of this documentary. Um, it seems like the response has changed. Okay, so we got regular, so it was still the DTF with the mom. That screenplay sounded hot. Where's part two coming out? See, I told you guys the X-rated version would do good. Wow, hard hitting stuff. Anyone know where I could order a rabbit like that? So 10 out of 10, 10 out of 10. Okay, so the rabbit's 10 out of 10. The screenplay's 10 out of 10, but the mom is still one out of 10. I mean, he's trying to get with the milk, so wouldn't it be 10 out of 10? Okay. The bee poster, like, didn't the telescope do good? The bee poster and the telescope kind of go together. But we haven't done the truck, the clock, or the fish. So let's see what's going on with them. The poorly carved toy truck serves as a reminder of an absent father, but sometimes Life on the road means, Mommy, when's Daddy coming home? Harold's father has been absent for most of his life, mostly owing to the fact that he's dead. He was involved in a massive collision, resulting in 52 deaths. Whoa. Father made me this truck himself. He said he used to work on it while he was on long journeys. The police officer said he was whittling the last piece when his truck collided with the school bus. For Harold, the watchful clock is ever ticking. In a way, time has been his only companion. I've always hated Crab Clock. He's always been there mocking me with his incessant ticking and talking. Did you know he's ticked roughly one billion sixty million six hundred and eighty thousand and one, two, three times since my incarceration? I didn't bother counting the talks. I don't know much about art, but I know all the greats had one thing in common. Absent or awful mothers. Could Harold be a trapped artist? I created this piece when I was about nine years old. I had planned for an entire underwater scene, but only got as far as these fish before mother burst through the door screaming. I was so startled, I stumbled and fell from the shelf, causing myself a serious back injury. The broken bones eventually healed on their own, but my breathing can be quite wheezy. I'm quite sure I needed medical attention, but Mother said only good boys are allowed to access the ambulance service. And he's never drawn on the wall since. Okay, this was horrible. So, um, a 6 out of 10 for depressing. I don't remember what went first. What went first? Oh, the truck. On um, the film, maker asked a prisoner about a clock while I'm looking at my watch. Four out of ten. Okay, yeah, the clock wasn't really good. Um, I stopped my child from drawing on the wall by forcing her to smoke and then tie your car in the cramp. Okay, so the truck wasn't bad. Everything else was trash. Okay, so this was a 10, this was a 10. The only thing we have left is the guitar, um, the TV, the B movie. Oh, uh, I can probably click on the bed. I didn't think about that. Can I click on the window? No, so yeah, let's have the car. A 42 year old man still sleeping in a plastic race car bed? How pathetic. And it's just what I'm looking for. <laughs> oh, Harold loves cars and sleeping. It only made sense to combine his passions. Okay, um, I don't think any of these are going to be big hitters, but we'll see. Music can take you to places only your ears can see. The guitar is Harold's vessel to unseen worlds. And he is the captain. If Mother allows it, I will play you a new piece I've been working on, entitled Plastic Race Car Bed. Here we are, 
Sitting in my car, my little plastic car, yes, here we are. Oh my car, my little plastic car, take me to the road and I sing this song. Old hot tar, not in my car, these tires are made for asphalt roads. The isolated idiot watching television is an escapism we all take for granted. My well, mother treated me to a modern television last year. She says if I'm good this year, she will allow me to keep the plug for an extra ten minutes. But you haven't been good, have you, Harold? Tell the man about the carrot you stuck up your nose. I told you not to smuggle food in here. Well, Kevin likes a snack when we watch the first 23 minutes of a movie. I noticed a poster for an old children's movie. For some, movies are an escape from reality. For Harold, his reality is like a movie. A depressing TV movie, starring actors you haven't seen in 20 years. I do love getting lost in a good movie. I think Boris the KGB movie was the last time I did get lost in a movie. It was the last time Mother rewarded me for good behaviour. I remember it like yesterday. I'm a bee, I'm yeah, mean, I'm an intellectual, I'm Russian, you see, I'm the homosexual. Good night, comrade, your drink's been laced, I'm gonna tie you up, pollinate your face, I want to torture you, make you scream, after all, I'm honest, the KGB, you better be there, brother, I'm breaking these, I'm a mad brother, buzzer, I'm KGB, you want to buzz with me, you can't buzz with me, to the K, to the G, to the mother, brother, B, you say you want to be it, but you're gonna die, you better say goodbye, here comes some cyanide. Boris, please, you don't have to do this. It was just business. It was all about the honey. I'm not a traitor. I love this country. You've got to release me. You have to see. I'm country first and I'm still KGB. You are no like a KGB. You're just a super worker bee. Prison number 33. You have another broken knee. Would you like a cup of tea? That was just a joke. You see, you'll never see a cup of tea. As long as you're a lucky baby, coffee is available. If you like a cup of tea, would you like a sugar cube? But the finish but the little bee. Because I aim to please, I got a knife and a hammer and some antifreeze. Is it hard to speak through your missing teeth? Will you try to fly? What's it take your eye? If you want to leave, then take my key. But I'm breaking these. I'm Boris the KGB. Oh, behave, brother. I remember Boris used to say, Oh, behave, brother. Get it? Behave. It was awfully funny when Mother used to tell me to behave and I'd retort, Oh, behave, Mother. Do you remember that, Mother? Yes, I do remember, you cheeky little shit. Then Mother would put you over her knee, but you didn't tell the man that, did you? Have you seen the version on YouTube where the movie speeds up every time Boris kills a dissident? It becomes quite dizzying. That was interesting. That was a musical version. So yeah, the guitar got a 10 out of 10. Um, the TV was whatever, 4 out of 10. And um, yeah, the B movie, I thought personally was like a 10 out of 10, but the 7 out of 10. Okay, so we know all the 10 out of 10s. Um, I do want to see what the car is real quick. Harold still sleeps. In the plastic race car bed, he slept in as a child. You can imagine Harold dreaming about driving away from this isolated, childlike reality. Well, I always had a passion for race cars as a child, but I suppose that passion has since left me, unlike the bed. Though I can't complain, the springs merely provide moderate pain, and my feet dangle no more than 7 to 10 inches from the end of the mattress. Like Mother always says, as long as your head is above water, you can technically sleep anywhere. <laughs> Wait, why did someone... 
<laughs> laugh so hard they pooped the milk. That'll tell you about a 10. Okay, so let's just combine all the tins and go from there. I'm not gonna make you guys rewatch it again because, like, I'm kind of bored rewatching this. But, um, let's go. Alright, so this one was excellent. The screenplay sounded so hot when parts when us, wins part two coming out. Um, of course we know about the rabbit and yeah, we know about the guitar. So there we go. We got our excellent documentary. <sighs> this was interesting. Um, here's a nice song to end off with. I hope you guys have a nice weekend. And I'll see you later. I think at this point in time, I'm ready to go back to my boredom and loneliness. Because uh, this was a little wild. Alright. Bye. This is one I wrote for you, Kevin. Well, when we're in my room alone, I start to take off all my clothes. I wish I had a camera phone, cause that's a nice erotic pose. Or we could make a calendar and you could be December. Oh, carrots help you see in the dark. We don't need lights when we fuck. I just need somewhere to park. Actually, I think it's too dark. I can't see anything. Can we put the lights on low? Oh, Kevin, you're a friend of mine. Through thick and thin, together to the end of time. Oh, Kevin, you're a friend of mine, but I never really took the time to find out what was on your mind. Just what you have in your insides. Oh, Kevin, I'm so sorry, I don't want to see you cry. Oh, Kevin, when we're making love, who you really thinking of? I know you like him strong and so wait, no, not Mr. Wimble. I'm not sure he's into you or even available. Oh, Kevin. You're a friend of mine Through thick and thin Together to the end of time